My name is Tony Arena. We are live tonight. We are taking your calls. The number is 388-0745. And, and tonight my guest is Maxine Wolf. Hi. And our topic is civil disobedience. So Maxine, uh, tell me, what was your first civil disobedience with ACT UP? Well, actually it was at the uh, Wall Street 2 action, which was an action um, that was in uh, March of 1988. March of 1988. Yeah, that was, well actually it wasn't the first civil disobedience, it was the first um, planned CD uh, civil disobedience that where people were forming uh, groups, you know, who were uh, willing to risk arrest. Mm -hmm. We actually had done an action before then. Uh, the Women's Caucus had done an action against Cosmo magazine um, where we actually, what you could say is broke laws, but... Um, what, was but the, what, were the, what was the reason behind uh, the action? The uh, Wall Street action? Yeah was again to bring um, uh, attention to the fact that there were profits being made off of drugs and people were not uh, getting access to them and the prices at that time, the price of uh, uh, AZT was astronomical and Burroughs Welcome was doing nothing about lowering it. And for our viewers who might not know, what, what exactly is the definition of civil disobedience? Well, it's a pretty broad-ranging definition, but it basically means that you what the word says, civil disobedience, you disobey some law that someone has set up or you do something that could be considered illegal. For example, like blocking traffic um, or trespassing, going into property, private property that you're not allowed to be on. Like if you go into the company, uh, the office of a drug company, it's a private property situation. Um, so if you go in there to state your case or to um, confront people uh, about what they are or are not doing, then technically they have a right to tell you to leave. And you should leave, legally. And if you don't? If, if you don't, then you're breaking the law. You are trespassing. Mm -hmm. So there are a whole range of, of laws. I mean, you could, civil disobedience can go way beyond that, you know. Uh, uh, but why, why would this be an effective tool in fighting AIDS? Well, you know, I don't think that, um, I mean, I think that civil disobedience is one kind of strategy um, and not every form of what you would call direct action is something that places you in a situation where you might be breaking a law. Um, so it, it's, you decide whether it's a reasonable strategy to use depending on what point you want to make. Uh, and at Wall Street, the point that we wanted to make was that business should not go on as usual. And so the idea there was to stop Wall Street. Um, and and wh what did you do that would constitute civil disobedience? Well, what we action? did that particular time was that there were waves of people that kept blocking traffic and literally brought that whole area to a standstill and brought media attention to the fact that there were people who were willing to risk arrest to um, make the point of drug profiteering and the inaccessibility of drugs and the non-development of drugs. and. The fact that at that time, I remember we had a sign, AZT was selling something like $20,000 a year and like the average salary of uh, a woman was something like $7,000 a year. So, you know, the idea that you couldn't, if you were a woman with AIDS, you would have no access to this treatment. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that civil disobedience, certain kinds of civil disobedience are very effective uh, for bringing attention to the issue as well as for letting the people that you're speaking to know that you're willing to go to those lengths to have your demands met. And I think that one of the good ways that ACT UP has used civil disobedience has been usually to give people the opportunity to speak to us before we do civil disobedience. So it's not as if you just go shouting at anybody anytime you want to shout at them. Generally, we've been fairly rational with people until they refuse to pay any attention to us. And you know, when you are a money corporate organization, you can put ads in the media extolling the virtues of your company, your corporate image, you know, what you are doing. When you are a grassroots organization, you cannot possibly compete financially. So you have to do it with numbers and with the kinds of actions that you do because that's the only way that you're going to get space in the media. We have a caller by the name of Phil. Phil, 
Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to know, is this show for big fat penises? Thanks, Phil. It was a crank call, which okay. we sometimes get, you know. Okay, so we, was, we were talking about civil disobedience and how, right. um, how it might be used. Now, um, there are people who have said that, um, that ACT UPS, uh, you know, is too, pushes the boundaries too far, that we are too, we, we ask for too much, and that the civil disobedience is too much of leaning towards extremism. Now, do you think that the, uh, these kind of criticisms come from like an uneducated point of view, or are they like valid criticisms? Well, I mean, I think that, I think that, again, I don't want to confuse just direct action with civil disobedience. We do lots of things that people don't like that are not civil disobedience. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, this country, um, other than being founded on the exploitation of Native Americans, was created um, by an act of civil disobedience. You know, it has a long and very proud history in this country in gaining people a whole range of rights that they should have been entitled to in the first place. Um, and, and has a long history in the labor movement and the uh, uh, civil rights, black civil rights movement, um, and the women's movement, the suffrage movement. Uh, it's used all over the world. And it's not sort of a, a marginal a marginal tactic, in fact. Um, so I don't think, you know, when people say that you're going to extremes, it's not like, I want to be doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, I would like the AIDS crisis to be over. I would like everyone to live. I would like drug companies to act responsibly. I would like the government to act responsibly. Um, I will try to be as rational as possible to get that to happen. Okay. We have a caller by the name of Dennis. Dennis, do you have a question? Yes, I have a question. Uh, even on the simplest um, uh, treatment, taking care of me, I have AIDS. Just going to the, the hospital, the, uh, no matter what you try to do in, in a large way with drug company, just to try to go to the hospital to be seen, is you, you're treated sort of like, like cattle. Uh, no no, no, no um, respect. You can't, you can't uh, uh, show any kind of uh, objection of your treatment at St. Vincent. If you show any objection, you're put aside, and they tell you go home, they make, make appointments for 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they only open till 5. If you express that you're concerned over your health at St. Vincent's, and you show you're intelligent, you show your concern, you're shunned. The attention is given to people that the illness is affected to that degree, they don't care. They just go there, they just go there like zombies. But I happen to be ill for many years and still have my brain. But uh, and once you show that, there is not only me with brains, there's so many few uh, other people. And uh, they're forced to get very violent, they're forced to get angry. Uh, a couple of times, the police in St. Vincent tell me to go. Social worker never calls me back. Aid services never call me back. And I didn't use my brains, but you see, this is the second time I faced eviction. I live in the village 22 years. And this is the second time I dealt with it, and I won, I accomplished. But I notice I'm getting sicker because I, I realize that if I don't use my brains, I'm going to wind up in a one room market for things. Mm. Well, well, I, you know, I know, I, I, what I'm trying to find out when I stop is that you try to get drugs, but even the basic things, well, the I, basic I, things, isn't they're not there. Well, let me just tell you that we did actually do do a couple of actions at St. Vincent's some years ago for exactly that reason. Because, uh, uh, in fact, it was a, a, a woman PWA who had gone in there and um, her lover wanted to go with her. And uh, they pushed her around and we ended up doing several direct actions there and then negotiated with them about doing certain kinds of trainings with their staff so they may need it again. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I think that that's another place where you can use direct actions uh, are for basic services. I mean, ACT UP has done, uh, just two weeks ago, there were people who were arrested uh, 
protesting the housing policies of the Giuliani administration and the issues around um, uh, housing for people with AIDS. So it's, it, it's been used in AIDS, you know, on, on issues with AIDS on almost every kind of issue. And it has worked. I mean, the best, you know, again, making a distinction between civil disobedience, in which case you are clearly know that you're doing something, you know, that could get you arrested versus direct action, which is doing an action that not, is not necessarily something you could get arrested for, but is directly approaching uh, or affecting the people you want to reach. So there's a difference between the two. But um, the best argument for direct action is that it works. And it has worked um, for lots of different uh, movements and, for, you know, to, to gain lots of different ends. But I, I just want to say one thing, which is that when you talk about the first CD action, um, I'm not a person who believes in cavalierly getting arrested. I think there are a lot of people in jail who never wanted to be there in the first place, and I think it's kind of cavalier to want to be in jail. Um, so when I, when I do civil disobedience trainings, I talk about being willing to risk arrest as opposed to wanting to be arrested. Um, and frankly, I never want to be arrested. I would rather do what I want to do and get away with it um, <laughs> and still have the impact. Um, but there are just times when you have to be willing to risk arrest. And I also want to say that a lot of those times are created by the uh, law enforcement authorities. That is like, for example, sometimes policemen will come over to you when you are doing something that's legal, like handing out leaflets. There were people in ACT UP that were arrested handing out leaflets in front of Gracie Mansion when uh, Giuliani was holding a reception there a couple of months ago. Yeah, told that they couldn't hand out leaflets. This is your constitutional right. Okay, but, but then the police, because of their power, can redefine it as a demonstration, which is what they in attempted to do, and then threaten you with arrest. And that's happened to me several times where I've been doing things that, as a citizen, I am totally allowed to do. We have another caller, Elliot. Elliot, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, I wanted to say bravo to you uh, both and to all of the young uh, members of ACT UP. I think that uh, the national disgrace we have here is, for example, the moment a country obsessed with O.J. Simpson, uh, with all the brutal details of this kind of violence, uh, guilty or not, notwithstanding. And when I see uh, active people out there uh, in the street marching and protesting and uh, demonstrating uh, in order to get uh, rights that everybody else has, it's just the uplifting. And uh, I fight constantly. I'm a little too old to uh, lay down in the streets, and I try and help in other ways, but I'm able to. Uh, I wish I were 22 and could do it. <clears throat> but it is a, uh, a necessary and courageous and brave thing that ACT UP is doing, and uh, not to be discouraged by the kind of people who are so comfortable sitting uh, high on their, in their condos and saying, oh, it's a disgrace, they're outrageous, they're too loud, they're too vulgar. You know, nothing gets done unless it's act up. And I say bravo to Larry Kramer, too, uh, for his speaking out. Whether you agree with him or don't agree with him, the man speaks out for rights and uh, dignity and what uh, people are entitled to. So, um, well, you people are courageous. You don't need my bravo, but I just wanted to add it. Thank you very, Thank much. very that, much. That's a very yeah. appreciated comment. Um, Larry Kramer, for those of you who might not know, um, co-founded or sparked the creation of ACT UP, and as a playwright. Um, our next caller is Ron. Ron, are you there? Ron's not there. Margo, are you there? Margo? Yes, hello. Hi. Hi. You're on the air. Can you, you have a question? Well, not really a question. I have a comment. Okay. I just wanted to say that I really commend ACT UP, the organization, for uh, the members' courage to stand up for what's right. Unfortunately, in our society, People sometimes uh, don't realize that in order for you to get some sort of power to get aid, to get um, help for people with AIDS, or to get people to understand what other people's living situations are, that you have to protest. I mean, that's how blacks in this country have gotten where they've gotten. Um, sometimes I wonder if we really have come that far. It seems like things are going backwards sometimes. But as a black female, I think that it's very important that we all stand up 
for what's right in the society and what's right is to be able to accept other people irregardless of what illness they have or if they're heterosexuals or homosexuals or whatever. And I really commend you for the work that you're doing. Oh, thank Thanks you. very much. You're welcome. Good night. Good night. Okay, our next caller's name is Candy. Candy, are you there? Candy is, yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's definitely very um, uh, heartening to hear these kinds of calls. Not the crank calls, but the, <laughs> the, the calls that um, you know, appreciate the work that we've been doing. Right. You know. I think that, you know, that the, the other thing that people have to know about, um, I think everyone always sees ACT UP out on the streets um, and doesn't understand like how much work goes into creating an action that, um, you know, f with a particular purpose. Not just work to organize the action, but work that's about finding out what the issues are that you should be doing actions about and uh, how much research people do and how one of the reasons why I think that um, we've been effective has been not just because we've been willing to be out on the street, but because we've had the information to give out to people. We don't pass out lies. We don't make up stories. No one has to make up stories in this pandemic. Um, we basically find out what some organization or institution is doing or not doing and figure out a way that we can get that information out to other people and pressure that organization, whether it's the Congress or um, uh, the National Institutes of Health or an individual hospital on every layer um, to do something. Our next call is from Cliff. Uh, hello. Um, uh, first of all, I want to say that to Maxine, I'm the, the man who uh, stopped you about uh, one evening you were with two other women on Lexington Avenue. I don't know if you remember. Yes, remember I that. do. Yeah. Uh, so I want to, you know, again, congratulate you like I did before. But I do have a comment to make. Um, Act Up Number One is my first um, uh, place of donation. Uh, you know, whenever I send in a donation for uh, for anything related to AIDS, it goes, it goes to Act Up. But uh, the comment that I want to make is that um, I don't understand why uh, more has not been made of um, the government. Uh, um, the responsibility uh, with AIDS. Uh, I, I believe that the AIDS is a, a government designed disease. And I mean, you take a man like Jesse Helms, I am sure if he were, uh, if he were uh, approached and told that we have, uh, you know, we have something that's going to kill all the quote unquote undesirables like uh, gay people and Hispanics and blacks, etc., and drug addicts. Uh, I'm sure he would say, go ahead and use it. Uh, as, uh, ditto Pat Robertson and, um, you know, all, all the rest. And what I'm, uh, what I'm using as, uh, as uh, you know, fuel or a reasoning is, uh, you know, you look at the Tuskegee uh, Institute um, experiment, you look at the recent experiments, uh, that were done, you know, with nuclear, yeah, it was this nuclear thing, you know, that just came out recently. I mean, there's so much hidden that the government has done, and and yet it's it's coming out, and yet the people are still sleeping. I mean, middle America is still sleeping and will not look at this for what it is. I mean, this is really uh, this is genocide. Uh, it reminds me of. Um, uh, yeah, you know, during, you know, before Hitler came into power, uh, the Jews were told that uh, there's somebody who's coming into power who's going to kill all of you. And it was so preposterous that uh, they didn't believe it. And it did happen. And, I mean, the idea, even even I said to myself, you know, do you really believe that that AIDS is a man-made thing? You know, uh, you know, wake up, think about it. And um, uh, I, mean, I, I certainly believe that there are a lot of, and there are a lot of uh, people like me out there who believe it too. And um, it's just hard to, it's hard to get the facts over that uh, this could very easily be, you know, the, uh, you know, the right, the Christian right or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it could easily be given to us for, uh, by them. And I mean, it's just, you know, it's something really
really to look at, and I don't know where, you know, where else to take it. I feel right. I've spoken enough. Maxine, any well, comments? I would just say that uh, actually Bob Lederer, quite a number of years ago, wrote an article. Um, he's in ACT UP, looking at various um, ideas about uh, the potential, you know, the idea that 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 AIDS could have been some chemical kind of warfare and. Um, and I, I think you should look at it. Um, I, I, I can't remember now exactly the pub. Oh, it was in a, a publication called Covert Action, and it was done in like 1989 or something. But um, I think that at this point, while it would be uh, someday we will know what the story is about this. At this point, I personally am more concerned with saving the lives of people who are sick already and also making sure no one else gets sick and using the the using the tactics of act up to make sure that that people are taken care of as opposed to simply you know exposing where it came from our next so. caller is spence spence are you yeah, there yeah uh, hi um maxine i have a question did we lose you Okay, call, call back, Spence. We accidentally lost you. Okay, uh, well, we're waiting for Spence to call back. Yeah. Um, uh, the previous caller brought up a point about um, uh, people in the right wing actively, you know, working against AIDS and, and whatnot. Do you think these people are unreachable, uneducational? Oh, Spence is back. Spence, you there? Yeah, hi. Okay, your question? Uh, this is my question. I I'm very upset about the... Um, the lack of uh, education in the school system and, and, and the fact that the young people aren't getting the information they need to prevent themselves from being infected. And I heard a very, very sad story today. A friend of mine is a mother who has a young teenage daughter in the public school system. She's the, the daughter is maybe 13 years old, and she mother recently discovered that the daughter is sexually active and, in fact, was able to access an abortion and was able to uh, is able to access certain kinds of birth control and what have you which you know I think is fine but the the problem that I see is are we being responsible and are like Planned Parenthood etc being responsible when they help a young woman um, avoid pregnancy with sort of the pill and other kinds of um, things that do not prevent AIDS transmission. I mean, what, you know, I, I just said to this friend of mine, you know, I said to her, I said, you know, she's so upset about her daughter getting pregnant, and I said to her, I'm, I'm very worried about your daughter getting HIV. Now, am I thinking about this correctly? I mean, what, you know, well, I mean, it's no, I think like I think you're absolutely correct when you say that um, this is totally irresponsible. Um, the, the fact of the matter is, Perhaps they just don't think of AIDS as something that, you know, often people say things like, oh, I never thought it w would happen to me. You know, they just think of it as something that other people get. And even, even discovering, like, like this woman did, that her daughter was sexually active, AIDS seemed to never even enter into, the pic into her mind as a possibility. But it is a very real possibility. Well, I think that... Um well, I, one of the biggest issues here is that women don't use condoms, men do. And um, that was sort of the focus of our first action about women in, in ACT UP, which is that all the advertising was about, you know, women taking condoms with them. And uh, it's one thing, especially at young ages, there's absolutely no support for women to uh, negotiate that with, with young men if they're having heterosexual sexual relationships um, and so it's more than simply having the availability of condoms I mean there has to be some way in which we go back to uh, a lot of the premises of the, the women's liberation movement about you know giving young women uh, support for being able to control their own sexual lives and uh, and also holding uh, young men responsible for carrying the condoms with them you know, we have very short memories in this country, but I grew up in the 50s, and in the 50s, the men were supposed to carry the condoms. 
But remember, you know, the condom is also a protection for the man as well. Yes, absolutely. But I'm just saying in terms of heterosexual relationships, we think it's like, you know, we've, we've gotten to the point where, where um, uh, in heterosexual relationships, most of the men don't think that they have to be responsible for birth control. Okay. And, uh, and, and they're, not, they're not educated to do it. So a barrier method like, like condoms uh, is going to be something that, that, that they should also be taught to take responsibility. Okay, we don't have a lot of time, but we yeah. do have a lot of calls. Let's see if we can get to all of them. Sam, you're next. Yes, hello. Maybe we'll have Hi, Sam. That direct I, <clears throat> pardon me. I, I just want to applaud you, all of you, who are members of ACT UP. I want you to know that I think you're courageous and heroic. And in your struggle, I hope that you promote our being gay and lesbian as being natural and healthy and fulfilling. And I thank you all very much for what you've done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Paul is next. Paul? Hi, this is Paul. How are you? Hiya, Paul. Hi. I noticed that the uh, gay games um, act up March with Nambla, and it was very disturbing to see that. Uh, oh, okay. Well, well, listen, well, Paul, you know, the, 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 act, the fact of the matter is ACT UP didn't march with NAMBLA. We held a march, and anyone who wanted to march could march, and NAMBLA just happened to come, you know. There is no, really no connection between us and them in any way. All right, who's next? Ron is next. Hello, Ron? Hi, um, I, uh, I want to uh, continue the... Um the gratitude. I just wanted to thank you guys and, and ladies very much because um, I, I personally only came out to my family about a month ago. I've been out to everyone else but my family and ACT UP and my friends in ACT UP and everything that ACT UP has done um, helped me to have the strength and the support to, to go forward and do that. I also wanted to thank you for everything that you guys have done. Um, you not only carry the torch, but lit the torch in the fight against AIDS and expanding awareness. Um, I wanted to also ask people who are listening to, you know, not to forget to support with money because it, everything costs and a lot of people love the fact that there are people in this world who are very strong and can take leadership. but. If you're not strong enough to participate as a leader, then you, you have to, as a gay person or anyone who cares about gay and lesbian issues, you have to support with dollars, too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ron, we have another Ron on the line. Ron, are you there? Hi. Do uh, you have a question I, about a direct action? <laughs> right. Well, I just wanted to say that uh, really wanted to commend ACT UP and the rest of the AIDS organizations and individuals who helped beat back the attempts of that bully Giuliani to get rid of DAS, the Department of AIDS Services. Right. Thank so, you. Yeah. And I mean, everybody worked hard on that and showed again that civil disobedience and threats of it and demonstrations do work. I'd like to know what's coming up in the future and how people can get involved. We'd like, well, well quick, we have 30 I'll tell seconds. you very quickly that we have a, a bill in Congress called the AIDS Cure Act which is to set up a project to find a cure for AIDS. That's one thing that people can get involved in by calling your Congress people and urging them to sponsor it or support it. Um, and we will be doing some actions about that. Okay, thank you very much. This is us, ACT UP.